Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Julius D. Berry with Majestic Studios, and today I got a great video for you guys on the Yamaha Montage M. Uh, this question came about from one of my students, uh, one of the guys who takes lessons from me, um, learning about programming the Montage. If that's something that you guys are interested in, uh, please feel free to shoot me an email, or leave me a comment in um, uh, the comment section, and I'll get uh, with you guys and we can get something set up for that. He was wanting to specifically learn about assigning controllers on the montage M he was specifically looking for um, the ability to control what his aftertouch was assigned to and so once we started talking about that we just kind of started diving down a rabbit hole and it just it started branching so many different ways uh, so I decided to do a video and this may turn into a series uh, but I'm not sure just depending on what kind of questions I get from the video uh, but I wanted to go over that with you guys so if you're interested in learning how to assign the controllers on the montage m this is a great video for you to watch and i hope you guys enjoy it while you're here don't forget like i always say hit the like button on the video hit the share button on the video hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber if you are a subscriber don't hit the subscribe button because that removes you as a subscriber all right so don't do that so but if you're not a subscriber please hit the subscribe button and if you want to stay up to date with any videos that are posted to the channel hit the notification bell and it will give you a notification via email or whatever option you select uh, once videos are uploaded to the channel all right let's get into this all right so you may ask julius when you say controllers what exactly are you talking about all right so in this great big awesome keyboard that we have uh yamaha gave us several different ways that we can modulate or manipulate the sounds that we play as we are playing the sounds um for example we have the uh pitch bin the modulation we also have the ribbon controller we have the portamento control uh, we have the assignable controls which we'll go over which are these eight knobs that you have here and the thing that made it super famous the thing that was its calling card that they used when they were advertising the keyboard when it was first released the first montage was this controller right here it's called a super knob all of these controllers that are on the keyboard allow us to while we're performing or playing sounds we can change these knobs these buttons and we can it allows something different to happen in the sound so that's why it's of use that's why it's important because it allows you to change the sounds in real time while you're playing so you may ask you know so well how do i assign them that's what we're here to see i want to know what i'm supposed to do to assign these buttons all right so what you want to do we're just going to go into one of these default sounds on the montage and um, you guys should be able to see everything on my screen um we're going to go into this sound call um poly dreams for example it's one of the it's the second sound when you are in the default live set um, when you buy the keyboard um, it's the second sound here we're just going to use that as an example all right so it sounds like this all right so we're going to go to performance home and we're at this screen here so what you want to do if you want to be able to there's a few different ways that they gave us to get to this um, but I'm just going to go with the standard and I'll show you guys a, another little Easter egg um, kind of thing um, to help get to it and access it as well but you're gonna push the edit button okay so once you push the edit button you'll see that there are several different options on the left side of the screen there's a row of options and then there's a row right next to it well actually those would be columns there's a column on the far left and there's a column right next to it the very last option is called mod slash control all right so when you go to that this is the modulation and control section of the keyboard where it will allow you to assign or change the way the parameters are set or how they respond to the controllers in the keyboard all right so this first section here so this is like this first column is the different categories that you can select it's general pitch modifier filter amp effects art ms and then mod control so if you push mod control the second column is going to change to um settings that are assigned or um, affiliated with the ones in the first column so now you, you see we have control assign after touch tx trans which was transmit and receive that's what tx and rx mean transmit and receive switch control settings and part lfo all right so we're going to concentrate specifically during this video on the control assign section and we may get into some of the other things um, in later videos like i said this may become a series all right so 
if you look here in this section right now it says part one and common so if we change this part one to common so we're going to get to common settings for the entire sound okay and this is the control section all right so if you right here where it says display filter at the top of the screen if you push that you will see a list come up of all of the control options that the keyboard has to offer okay and there are a lot of them okay these are all of them all right you see your pitch bands here modulation wheel uh, channel after touch depending on which model of the montage you have um, you also have um, poly after touch but we'll talk about that probably in a later video as well but they give you the option for channel after touch here you have foot controller one foot controller two this foot controller assigned would be if you have like an expression pedal or something like that connected to the keyboard or some type of foot controller that's plugged into the foot controller inputs in the back of the keyboard then you have the foot switch all right and we have the ribbon controller breath controller and then the assignable knob so you guys see there and there's a super knob there is a lot of different uh, options that you have to select from here in this section okay so let's just we're going to we're not going to get into any specifics about any one controller but we're just going to talk about the menu itself and kind of how it works at the top of the screen when as you select these different options you'll see in the display filter that it changes which one is there all right so this is just going to filter out those specific controls that are assigned to that I mean the uh, parameters excuse me the parameters that are assigned to that specific controller or they can be assigned to that specific controller all right so we'll just go with um let's just go with the mod wheel for now once you, once you get the the control that you want selected all right once you have the one selected that you want to use you can then assign something to it with one of these four gray boxes that are across the top of here so you see right now in this sound there's nothing specific in the common area of the sound assigned to the mod wheel now let's when I say that let's let me be a little more specific about what I mean by that because right now we're in the common settings okay so if you're familiar with the Yamaha engine well that was the motifs the montages you know they have a common area where you're editing the common settings for the sound and then they also have a part edit all right and once you're in the common those settings that you have access to those parameters that you have access to are much different from the ones when you're in part so right now when we're in common edit there is no common thing assigned for the entire sound at large to the mod wheel but if we go into part edit we might see that there is one Okay, so right now the mod wheel in part one of this sound is assigned to insert B dry or wet. So that's going to manipulate the dry or wet signal for this sound. It's going to manipulate it based on how you have the modulation wheel set. Let's go back out to the common edit screen and we're going to just look at because the way this works is going to be the same thing whether you're in part or common but the parameters that you have access to will be different and you guys can kind of explore and see that uh, for yourself and see how it will benefit you the most or what settings you'd want to change the most. So if we push this plus sign we'll see that a destination pops up here and that is just telling you this is where that control when you change it this is where the information will be sent this is the parameter that will receive information from that control source that you have selected right now we have mod wheel selected so if we right now it's saying insert a parameter one okay so what that is is um, what that specifically is is insert effect a they all have each one of your insert effects will have several parameters within them those parameters have uh, numbers assigned to them and this is just telling you that right now insert effect a parameter one will receive a change based on when you change this mod wheel okay so that's not the one that we want to use for example but I, I want to just show you guys how it looks so if you push destination 9 and you look at this screen that pops up now you see you have all of these different parameters that you can select from to change when you move that modulation wheel all right so insert effect a has insert a parameter one all the way through parameter 24 okay all right same thing with insert b 
parameter one all the way through parameter 24 so you have to go into that insert effect and see what those specific parameters are and you're able to manipulate them based on changing the mod wheel all right so we can go to reverb reverb the reverb effect itself can receive information from that modulation source which is the mod wheel it's got reverb uh reverb time the diffusion parameter three um high pass filter cut low pass filter cut and all just a bunch of other parameters that are assigned to that one effect all right all the way down the master effect same thing you have all of these different parameters that can receive information from the modulation source you have your ad parameters and then you also have your common parameters so these common parameters are going to refer to the entire sound itself all right, so you have different things here that you can pick from volume, uh, the swing of the ARP if you have an ARP assigned, uh, the tempo if you want to change the tempo of the ARP or the tempo within the, the exact sound that you're playing. Um, you can change that via the modulation wheel, okay? So you don't have to go into specific settings, but you can have these parameters assigned to receive information from whatever controller you select right now we're under the modulation wheel but it could just as easily been the pitch bin or one of the foot controllers or even your aftertouch okay so let's look now what these parameter options would be you see these are the things that we have selected or have access to under the common but if we went to part one let's look at now how these options are going to change now you're going to have access you still have access to insert a insert b part parameter but now they've added something called the a and x parameter so this is going to be dependent on what engine you're currently in that sound that we picked at the very beginning of the video is an a and x sound so because of that it gave us a and x parameters that we can use to assign to this controller and as you see they have a whole lot of them whole lot of them so depending on what it is you're trying to change you can use any of the controllers or a combination of the controllers to modify the settings of a sound while you're playing live without having to go into um, the specific menu to get to that parameter all right so let's just say for example um, just to give you guys an example we're on ANX parameters all right, so I'm selecting just to give you guys show you guys an example of this. I'm on part parameter and I'm going to select pitch. So I believe that when I change the mod wheel, it's going to modify the pitch of my sound. So let's just see. I'm going to just play a, a chord. I'm going to move the modulation wheel now. Alright, and depending on how much you want that parameter to move based on that modulation, you have to adjust these settings here. We're not going to go into a lot of detail that I'm, I am going to show it though, just so you guys can see. So if we put our ratio on negative now, negative 128. So you guys see what it did? When I move the modulation wheel up, because that ratio parameter is on negative 128, it's moving the sound negative it's moving the pitch down okay and so I want to come back up with it all right that negative ratio is moving the sound negative okay negative so it's going toward or away from positive <laughs> all right so if we put this ratio back up to let's say 128 will be drastic so let's go 127 excuse me all right so you may not want it to be that big of a jump when you move it so let's just go in the middle let's go to like 64 all right okay so what's really cool about this though is that you can have it um, modify multiple parameters at a time well how do you do that Julius all right easy all you do is this plus sign you just add another one you so now you have four different destinations that you can send each modulation source to at any given time all right so we're just gonna add another one and this time we're gonna do cutoff 
All right, so first let's put our pitch back to something that is not as drastic. Let's go to like in the 20s. So I wonder, well, not never mind. Let's go into the 20s. All right, so we got the pitch at a decent spot. Okay, so now let's add the next destination as cutoff. Let's try that. So we're going to go to part parameter. Well, actually, let's, yeah, let's do cutoff. Let's do cutoff. So we're going to go to ANX parameter, and we're going to look at cutoff. All right, so you see that when I'm raising the modulation will up because my cutoff is positive and my pitch is positive it's raising the pitch and it's also opening the cutoff at the same time from one modulation source all right so we could just as easily put the cutoff on negative 64 and so now when we play a sound it's gonna raise the pitch and it's gonna close the cutoff the filter is going to start to close up. Let's see. See that? Pitch is super high. It's closing that filter all the way, really. It's like, I don't want it to close all the way. So let's put it in the 20s. So as you see, this could be very, very powerful. All right. Now, like I said, each modulation source can be sent to four destina up to four destinations at a time. Okay. So just like we were just using the mod wheel, if you wanted that to be assigned that same thing. So let's just go back and let's turn these off. So go to enter and um, I don't. Okay. So that is a question that I did have. If you want to delete one of these, how would you delete it? I don't know if there is a way to do that. All right, so I do want to tell you guys that, so like now I'm wanting to delete these. I don't see a way within the, um, the menu as it is to delete a destination after you've already set it. So that may be something that we need to talk about a little later, or maybe that's something that uh, Yamaha, if you guys see this video, you would be willing to add in a future update, the ability to go back to undo. So you could undo something that you did here, or if you just want to click on it and like put none, there's an option that says none or or take it out completely that would be pretty helpful okay um so just i'm gonna leave these here see our modulation will is assigned to those all right so let's put one on the uh ribbon controller all right so we're gonna go to down to ribbon controller we'll go to ribbon and we can put this one on let's see Okay, so what we assigned our ribbon to is the amp envelope generator attack. So that's going to be the attack of the amp. Okay, so we have our ribbon there. So right now when the ribbon is all the way off, I'm at the far left, the attack is wide open. So that's right when it, you press the key, you're going to hear the sound. All right, so as I move it to the right though, that attack is going to start to taper off and the envelope is going to start doing this where now we have a slow attack slower attack for the sound let's see Right? And so right now that ratio is wide open. So of course it's very drastic once you get to the far end of the controller. So let's see. 
So the closer to zero that we get, the less drastic that attack, um, that angle is on that attack for the envelope. All right, so you guys see that. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you really quickly, and like I said, we're going to deep dive into this a little bit, I think, in future videos. Um, but you also have the option to assign um, your assignable knobs, which are these eight knobs. You can assign those to parameters as well. So let's look at that really quick. So we're going to go to assign knob one. And right now it's set to the cutoff. And you start changing it. And you say nothing's happening. I'm changing the knob, but nothing's happening to the sound. That's because right now this this row can have many different functionalities. You can select the selected part, uh, multi parts, or um, the groove as far as probably when you're in the uh, ARPS. Um, but if you want it to be on their assignable, whatever your assignable switches are, then you press this button here that says assign. So once I press this button, you'll see that this screen here is gonna change. And now whatever parameters are assigned to these knobs are here in this area. So now we see assignable knob one. If we look at this assignable knob one is set to cut off and we see cut off here. Assignable knob two is set to resonance. We can see resonance here. Assignable knob three is amp envelope generator attack and the filter envelope generator attack you see attack here and decay is number four and so on and so forth so we go back to the first one assignable knob one we'll see that the sign knob is set to cut off so once we spin this knob or turn this knob we'll see the cutoff filter for our sound will change all right you see that all the way open, all the way closed. All right, really cool. All right, all right, so that gives you another source of modulation. There are eight knobs here, okay? So you've got all these modulation sources that we talked about, the ribbon controllers, the pitch bend, modulation wheel, um, uh, after touch but then you've got these eight knobs and each one of these eight knobs can have up to four places that it can be sent as far as the destination as well just like the other controllers so you can send them to, to multiple places at once as well but i think this is really cool here um that if you call if you want to call or not call but if you want to have you know some really cool routing as far as what's being changed by your modulation source you can change what the name says where it says display name right here on the screen if you click that you can change it to anything you want um let's say we can call it um super modulation super mod i'm gonna say super mod Press super mod, press done, and look at that, it changed to super mod. All right, so this will be quick reminders on the screen to show you guys that, hey, I can, you know, change these modulation sources, these modulation controllers, and I can, you know, name them for as far as my assignable knobs, I can name them so I can remember um, what I am uh, changing at any given moment. So that's, that's really cool. Um, so as you guys can see, this video could get very long, um, but I don't want it to be. So I'm going to try to, you know, cut. Hopefully I'm able to get this cut back enough where you guys can enjoy it at full length, um, even if it gets to be 15 minutes or so long. Um, but I want to break down each one of the controllers and the parameters that are assigned to each one um, in a future video. And this is just the ANX engine. Um, we can also do something very similar to this with the... Um, uh, AMW2 engine as well excuse me the AWM2 engine um, as well and um, and we also get control over at elements and we can tell the elements which ones to respond to the various controllers or not so it can get very deep um, it is going to get very deep and so like I said I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope this is beneficial to you hope there's something from it that you can pull um, to be able to get maximum benefit from this 3,000 $3,500, $2,800 keyboard that you purchase. There's a lot here under the hood and uh, let's dig and let's get it. Yamaha put a lot of effort into making this and, and giving us a lot of tools at our fingertips. So let's dig into it and see if we can, what we can pull from it.
see you guys in the next video if you like this if this is helpful to you please like the video push the little thumbs up button it won't cost you anything but one click on your mouse that tells the algorithm that this is good content and it will push it out to other people and that helps my channel quite a bit subscribe to the channel um, and you know we have membership options that you guys can check out if you want to do one-on-one -on -one sessions or if there's like uh, we have options for like live live stream like zooms or Microsoft teams where we can get in big groups and do sessions just like this so if this is something that you guys are interested in if it helps you hey let me know all right hope you enjoyed it see you guys in the next video later